Greetings and salutations. It is I, Mr. Nothing, the museum curator of the weird and the strange and the host who might be a g-g-g-g-g-ghost. <laughs> uh, welcome back to Around the Weird, a booktube channel where I talk about all the unusual and out of the ordinary literature that I found in my travels throughout many haunted houses, uh, here, there, and everywhere. Uh, today it is Poetry Thursday. A lovely day to talk about uh, poetry, beautiful poetry, spooky poetry, um, poetry that stands out to me as, as interesting. And believe me, I, I, I go through a lot of poetry that I find, you know, not interesting and I just don't talk about on here because, you know, I can talk about a book I don't like, no problem. But to talk about poetry I don't like feels kind of weird and 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 boring like like what am i going to be like like oh this poem was not fun for me to read and i noticed absolutely nothing with it um i don't want to talk about it any further uh so you know uh talking about poetry i like uh it is uh still october um got a uh, two or three more days here uh left to go before uh, I can finally, at long last, stop talking about scary stuff. It's not that I don't like scary stuff. Um, it's just that I, after 31 days, you know, I'm kind of over it. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'll be happy to take a break from from the spooky for, for a little while. Um, I'll probably return to it maybe in December or something. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to focus on more, uh, more, I don't know, other things uh, in, in November. Uh, so yeah, uh, I wanted to talk about a poem today, uh, two minutes into the video, uh, where I, um, uh, that's from a poet that I've never really heard of before, um, but it's about a, a haunted house of a kind. I am talking about The Haunted by John Maysfield. Um, as I mentioned before, I don't know too much about John Maysfield. This is his first poem that I've read by him, uh, based on other stuff I could find. He's a pretty prolific poet, was a pr pretty prolific poet. He lived um, in late 1800s to, um, to mid-century 1900s. Uh, and he, uh, he was the Poet Laureate in the United Kingdom, a uh, pretty big title. Uh, and he wrote about, uh, uh, I don't really know what he wrote about. Again, um, I'm basing this on one poem uh, that's, a, that's a spooky poem. Uh, but uh, he, he wrote a lot. He wrote plays and, and poetry and books. Uh, so, um, and based, based on what I've read uh, with this poem, I kind of want to explore more about him just because he, he has a, a pretty interesting style. I don't know if that style carries over to anything else, but it'd be fun to find out. Uh, so yeah, let's, let's talk about uh, The Haunted. Um, I'll read the poem, do a little analysis, and we will move on from there. The Haunted by John Maysfield. Here in this darkened room of this old house, I sit beside the fire. I hear again within the scutter where the mice carouse, without the gutter dropping with the rain. Opposite are black shelves of wormy books. To left, glazed cases dusty with the same. Behind, a wall with rusty guns on hooks. To right, the fire that chokes one painting flame. Over the mantle, black as funeral cloth, a portrait hangs. A man whose flesh the worm has mawed this hundred years, whose clothes the moth a century since, has channeled to a term. I cannot see his face, I only know he stares at me, that man of long ago. I light the candles in the long brass sticks. I see him now, a pale-eyed simpering man, framed in carved wood wherein the death watch ticks, a most dead face. Yet when the work began, that face, the pale puce coat, the simpering smile, the hands that hold a book, the eyes that gaze, moved to the touch of mind a little while. The painter sat in judgment of his ways. The painter turned him to and from the light, talked about art, or bade him lift his head, judged the lips paleness and the temples white, and now his work abides. The man is dead, but is he? This dusty study drear creaks in its panels that the man is here. Here beyond doubt, he lived in that old day. He was a doctor here, the student thought. Here, when the puce was new, that now is gray. That simpering man his daily practice wrought. Here he let blood, 
prescribe the pill and drop, the leech, the diet, here his verdict given brought agonies of hoping to a stop. Here his condemned confessioners were shriven, what is that book he holds, the key too dim to read, to know? Some little book he wrote, forgotten now, but still the key to him. He sacrificed his vision for his coat. I see the man, a simpering mask that hid, a seeing mind that simpering men forbid. Those are his books, no doubt, untouched, undusted, unread. Since he last left them on the shelves, Octavo's sermons that the fox has rusted, side splitting off from brown decaying twelves. This was his room, the darkness of old death, this coffin room with lights like embrasures. The place is poisonous with him. Like a breath on glass, he stains the spirit he endures. Here is his name within the sermon book. And verse, when hungry worms my body eat, he leans across my shoulder as I look. He who is God or pasture to the wheat, he who is dead is still upon the soul, a check, an inhibition, a control. I draw the bolts, I am alone within. The moonlight through the colored glass comes faint, modeling the passage wall like human skin. Pale with the breathings left of withered paint, but others walk the empty house with me. There is no loneliness within these walls. No more than there is stillness in the sea or silence in the eternal waterfalls. There in the room, to the right, they sit at feast. The dropping graybeard with the cold blue eye, the lad, his son, that should have been a priest, and he the rake who made his mother die, and he the gambling man who staked the throw. They look me through, they follow where I go. They follow with still footing down the hall. I know their souls, those fellow tenants mine. Their shadows dim those colors on the wall. They point my every gesture with a sign. That graybeard cast his aged servant forth after his forty years of service done. The gambler supped up riches as the north sups with his death the glories of the sun. The lad betrayed his trust. The rake was he who broke two women's hearts to ease his own. They nudge each other as they look at me, shadows all hour, and yet as hard as stone. And there he comes, that simpering man, who sold his coat for, er, who sold his mind for coat of puce and penny gold. A ruinous house within whose corridors none but the wicked and the mad go free. On the dark stairs they wait. Behind the doors they crouch, they watch, or creep to follow me. Deep in old blood your ominous bricks are red. Firm in old bones your walls' foundations stand. With dead men's passions built upon the dead, with broken hearts for lime and oaths for sand, terrible house whose horror I have built. Sin after sin unseen as sand that slips telling the time, till now the heaped guilt cries and the planets circle to eclipse. You only are the daunter, you alone clutch till I feel your ivy on the bone. So yeah, that was uh, The Haunted by John Maysfield, a particularly interesting poem uh, about uh, hauntings and uh, going through a, ha a haunted house and, and sort of reliving the memories of of, of the people there and, and f being, you know, uh, slightly, uns more than slightly, but largely unsettled by what's happening in this place. Uh, and John Maysfield does, this, uh, does a beautiful job of uh, of building up this spooky atmosphere by describing how the paintings are rot rotting away and how the house is, is kind of forsaken. Um, and one thing that I think he does really well uh, with this poem uh, is uh, describing how the, the patriarch in the, in, the, in the painting, who I assume is the head of the house, uh, um, is, still lingers on like a memory that just won't go away, a forsaken memory. Uh, let, me, let me read this to you. The place is poisonous with him. Like a breath on glass, he stains the spirit he endures. Which I think is a marvelous way of, of writing. It's, it's, some, it's what, some of the best writing I've ever come across in a poem. Uh, just describing like a person who still, like their memory still lives here. I don't think there's a physical haunting taking place. I think it's more the memory of the place that's scary rather than the actual uh, uh, physical man manifestation of a ghost. And so like the place like is, is, poisonous, is poisoned by the very memory of this man because something 
terrible happened in uh, in his previous life. Uh, um, I don't know if the narrator was personally connected to this man, or if he's uh, if he's the man himself and he's simply recalling his own life. It, it, there's a lot of questions raised there by the poem uh, that I won't go into, but uh, uh, it's it's really interesting how Macefield describes this guy as like so connected to the house and and so toxic to the house that the, that you can't step foot in it without being reminded that this man existed. Uh, it's 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 uh, wonderful. I can't say enough uh, good and, and spooky things about it, um, uh, as well as the the way he describes the other people who um, had a, um, had tragic lives and things didn't turn out the way they probably wanted. Uh, so it's um, it's a solid poem uh, and definitely worth checking out. As I as I just mentioned, uh, I absolutely love this poem. Uh, Probably one of the best I've read uh, since I started the Poetry Thursday videos, um, and one of the best in October, uh, uh, which I think is saying something. I feel like I say it all the time, though, like, hey, this poem was good. But uh, yeah, be sure to check it out. I'll put a link to it in the uh, in the description so that you can find it, and we can have a conversation about it in the comments, because that sounds super groovy. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so that we can get Poetry Thursday out to the masses. And be sure to follow me on our, at Around the Weird so we can talk about poetry uh, and books and pop culture and, and all those fun things that you'll find on my Twitter account. Uh, and until then, I wish you the best of luck in your weird and haunted travels. Farewell.